Hello, and welcome back to the Self Healer Soundboard. Today's episode, we're going to talk about jealousy. But before we dive in, because this episode will air on Sunday, January 2nd, we wanted to announce that the Self Healer Circle, our virtual self led global membership, is now open. As a reminder, for those of you who tuned into last week's episode, enrollment happens by wait list only. Everyone who is on the wait list will have an opportunity to enroll and should check your emails because the link to sign up is in there now. We look forward to welcoming all of our new members into the circle. If you are listening to this episode after January 2nd, you're welcome to join us for our future enrollments of the Self Healer Circle. We do open our membership three times a year. So if you're unable to join us this time, you're welcome to join us during our next enrollment in May 2022. Today's episode and conversation topic actually come from a direct message that I received on Instagram from one of our Self Healer Soundboard listeners. The question specifically was asking to create an episode around how not to be jealous of other situations, people, or things, and how to actually be happy with what you have and be happy for other people. So to begin this, we're going to dive into what jealousy actually is and explore where jealousy comes from. So starting with the first part of that question, um, how do I not be jealous, essentially, is what I heard. And jealousy is actually really a normal human emotion. It comes from evolution around resources in particular. When resources were scarce, when mates or support or food, whatever it was, was scarce, when we saw someone else having that, we wanted that for ourselves. So to be clear, Just like all of the emotions that we often explore here on the soundboard, jealousy is is quite normal. A lot of us feel jealous. Jealousy can actually be an indication for us of something that we want or that we need for ourselves. Usually, of course, it's related to feeling like we're lacking that thing already, like we don't yet have it. So acknowledging the normalness of this emotion allows us to then begin to notice, notice those moments where you are feeling jealousy And of course, becoming curious about what might be activating that feeling for you. I think it's helpful here to look at jealousy as what it is, a feeling, the physiological sensations that we feel in our bodies when we experience jealousy. And for anyone listening, I'd explore this for yourself as well. In a moment where you're experiencing jealousy, there's three core things. There's what you are jealous of. So what is it that you're jealous of? Are you jealous of someone else's position or job or relationship? Jealous of someone else's car or someone else's physique? Who is it that you're jealous of? Are you jealous of someone in a higher power role? Are you jealous of someone who has or is living the life that you desire and that is not the life that for you, you're living? And then there's why. So there's a what, a who, and a why. The why is the most important here. It gives us an opportunity to go down a path of self-discovery. I'm experiencing these feelings of jealousy Why am I experiencing that feeling of jealousy? That's a deeper exploration for ourselves to really get in touch with and learn ourselves even more. So here we're really looking at jealousy on a macro level of what it is that we want in life, being immediately jealous of a friend or a situation or another's opportunity can really reveal to us what it is that we want for ourselves which then allows us to open up to actually getting it. Once we see jealousy as an access point or an open door to really ask ourselves those questions, what am I jealous of? Who am I jealous of? Okay, now that I have that lined out, why am I jealous of that? When we have that awareness, we now have a starting point to obtaining those things within our own lives for ourselves. I think what you're touching on here, Jenna, is the reality that what jealousy comes from, right, is this idea that We want something that we don't have. And that last part of what you just spoke is really beautiful because in that is a reminder that we do have the possibility or the capability for these things within ourselves. So becoming curious might allow you then to turn inward and to then begin to embody the steps to take to acquire that thing, to have that experience, whatever it might be. And I'll use my own self for an example. So for me, as I became really conscious of my moments of jealousy, and I, of course, have them as well, the moments that activated my jealousy all revolved around a theme. And for those of you who have heard me speak in the past about one of my core wounds, 
I notice that I become really jealous when I see someone else's time or attention or what I call consideration going to someone else and not to me. So becoming curious in that moment, and for those of you who heard me speak on this, know that I have a deep wound around consideration, not really feeling like I was fully seen and heard as a child. So for me, that wound gets activated when I see someone else receiving the consideration that I myself might want or might need in that moment. So becoming curious allowed me to then have that awareness. The things that make me feel jealous as Nicole with my wound are, again, in those moments where if I turn inward, what I might learn in that moment is that I am lacking something in myself. I do need to either give myself time or attention in that moment, some extra love, or I can now make a choice. I can go to the person or the thing that I'm not feeling being fully attentive to me and make the request, say, hey, let's carve out some time so that we can spend together so that I can give you my time, attention and presence, and I can then receive that from you, right? So in that moment, I'm embodying the steps to get that need met, to actually not just focus on, oh, hey, you over there, you're not giving me what I want, which is what a lot of us do when we're feeling jealous. I can actually activate. I can become an action to go get that need met. And all of that began because I got curious, because I sought to understand what is coming up for me in that moment. And that curiosity allowed me to then go solve that or meet that need for myself. So Nicole's giving all of us a concrete example of what it likes to become curious, to explore those questions, the what, the who, and the why. The only way she's able to explore that curiosity is by being present and by being conscious in that present moment, asking herself those questions, recognizing, oh, I feel some type of way when I see that person over there getting this attention that I feel I deserve. And now I feel that that person getting that attention means that I'm lacking getting that attention as if there's not an abundance of it. Now, that awareness is really powerful and it touches on a deep wounding and insecurity that Nicole has. And a lot of these, as we discuss often, come from our childhood. As a child for me, I was always very jealous of families who got along, families who had family dinners, families who had nice cars. I was highly jealous of any family that had like brand new carpet and white painted drywall. I had some fantasy about brand new homes, likely because mine was falling apart and we didn't have heat. I saw all of these things over there that I didn't have over here. Now, I use that example in childhood. While I'm not responsible as a child for creating that environment, I can see where that wounding carries into adulthood, where there's an immediate jealousy in the form of scarcity. There's not enough. That person over there has the thing that I want. They have the skills that I want. So if they have them, I must not have them because there's only one to go around. And that's just not true. So having this conscious awareness and being able to witness and ask ourselves the questions, what am I jealous of, who, and why, it's that why that then opens us up to our own insecurities, our own wounding, as Nicole's touching on her wounding of not feeling considered. So when this feeling of jealousy comes, as with all emotions and feelings, we can really reframe them as our teachers. That fleeting feeling, or maybe it's not so fleeting, maybe jealousy sticks around for quite a while and you ruminate on it. We do that often because we're human. Now, being conscious and aware of that happening is really powerful because then you become the witness and get to explore deeper. So I like to look at jealousy then as a bridge. It can be an access point for you to then have open, vulnerable conversations with the people around you, with your coworkers, with your partners, and first and foremost, and most importantly, conversations with yourself, your own self-discovery and exploration of why you're feeling that way, what it is that they have or are doing that you feel you don't have. So then jumping off of that point right there, because so much of jealousy comes from this idea, because it is an idea that we lack that. And maybe we aren't expressing that thing in that moment, or we don't have whatever it is in that moment. It doesn't mean that it's not a possibility for us. And a lot of us have that lack mindset. I know I did myself. There was 
a million moments where I saw what people have and I gave all of the reasons why they were deserving of that and I myself wasn't. The way that we break ourselves out of that lack-based thinking is by really practicing embodying gratitude. And what is gratitude really simply? Gratitude is just an appreciation, even just a statement about what is there, what is present, as opposed to like we were sharing earlier, focusing on what isn't present or what I'm not getting, beginning to actually start by retraining your mind, by in that moment, offering yourself a reminder of what is the possibility. So using my example, while I might not have someone's time or attention in any given moment, I can be grateful that I have the possibility, I have a human that I can go have a vulnerable, honest conversation with, that I can say, hey, I would like to carve out some time and space for pure presence or for attention. For me, I really practice gratitude. I still make it a point to reframe. The second I think about what I don't have and feel badly about it, whatever it is, if it's jealousy or sadness or whatever I'm feeling in that moment, I can reframe and, and pick something, find something that is present. And that is how we can begin to create, again, that pathway to getting that thing, right? The more we embody what we do have, the more we can continue to walk toward actually then acquiring whatever it is that we really do want in that moment. Nicole's really highlighting that it comes back to you. You are at the core and the center of all of your healing, all of your transformation, and all of how you show up in other external relationships. That begins with you, which is why the work then is an exploratory, what am I feeling jealous of? Who am I feeling jealous of? And then why? That last question of why is for you. So often we're talking or thinking about the person over there, how we want to change or fix or cure that other person. And the truth is, whether we like it or not, there's nothing to change or fix or cure in another person. People just are the way that they are. And if we're having feelings or an experience in our lives that we don't like, that's not as a result of the other person. And I understand and have a lot of compassion for the fact that that's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. However, our life experience, you could picture yourself walking around in a little bubble or an orb. I have all kinds of weather going on around me. If I'm to allow the weather of someone else's mood or environment impact mine, that's on me. And that begins with consistent conscious practice. As Nicole's saying, you know, I reframe all these things that I don't have to being grateful for what I do have. And I can already hear like a past version of me and many listeners kind of rolling their eyes at that. Like that sounds taxing. That sounds really exhausting. And honestly, we know that sometimes it is. The reason we call this the work is because it quite literally is work. It takes a choice whether you want to show up and create something new for yourself or not. And I think sometimes that sort of like stark, ruthless compassion isn't what people want to receive right away. It's maybe what we need to hear. But again, we only hear what we want to hear. We don't all the time or very often at all, hear what it is that we need to hear. It is up to us to choose to do that reframe, to notice, okay, I'm feeling jealous in this moment. My hands are getting clammy. My heart's really racing. I really envy or I'm jealous of that person over there. Those feelings right in that moment, you can begin to train yourself to just witness, oh, I'm having that feeling. My heart's racing. I'm getting really jealous or really angry about this person over there. And as my brother would say, if you spot it, you got it. If you see something over there in someone else or in another situation, you're only seeing it because it's already over here with you first. I experienced this very greatly and very publicly, even just meeting Nicole and merging with Nicole in work and now life and business. And I immediately, when I was first shown this holistic psychologist Instagram years ago, got completely white faced. My hands got clammy. My heart started racing. And I immediately wanted to give up because I thought, oh my gosh, here's this person that feels so resonant with me and what I'm doing. And they're out there doing it on such a much larger, consistent scale. I saw so many things in Nicole and also in her partner, Lolly, that I saw in myself as lacking. When in reality, the reason that I saw them was because it was in alignment with me. And when I discover, okay, what is it that I'm jealous of about her? What is it I'm jealous of about them? 
who am I jealous of? I'm jealous of all these other people who are out there speaking and teaching and who are known. Okay, why am I jealous of that? I'm jealous of that because I'm insecure. I'm jealous of that because of my own wounding that I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not a doctor. I don't have a PhD. I'm in no way capable or able to be up there on that level. And all of those things aren't true. They come from old conditions beliefs. So my feeling of that jealousy, the awareness of it, and then being able to explore deeper, okay, well then why? If I'm feeling all those things, I know there's abundance everywhere. I'm grateful to know that if I witness it over there in them, it's also here in me. So the work is now to go to town with me and myself and create a life with my actions that is in alignment with the people and things and situations that I'm feeling, quote, jealous of. I appreciate you you sharing that aspect because I actually now want to talk about the other side of jealousy and something that, you know, I've lived the experience of consistently over time in different aspects, which is being a person that I was witness to other people's insecurity or other people's jealousy. And just in, in the context of this conversation, I think a really big takeaway here right, is really understanding in those moments that if you are seeing or experiencing someone else's jealousy of you, whatever you might have, however it is you might be in the world, really understanding that it's not about you, doing what I call depersonalizing, doesn't mean it doesn't have an impact. So for me, it had a great impact. And what I was referencing earlier, my awareness of, of people and how they experienced me began in childhood. First, it began in my family. I heard very consistently, and it was a joke, of course, and I understood it as a joke, but there was this idea that I was the quote unquote Christ child. Nicole had all of the time and the attention in the family. And I heard this a lot from my siblings, right? So hearing that, being an attuned individual like we all are in childhood, Right? That had an impact on me. Here I had two people, my brother and my sister, who I did love, you know, and I love very dearly, kind of having or living the negative experience of the attention that was going to me. And then flash forward in time, as I began to excel academically, as I began to excel particularly in sports, I became very aware, you know, not really consciously, unconsciously, I noted. it. I noted when someone was upset that I, you know, struck them out, I was a pitcher or, you know, my team won the championship or whatever it was. I noticed the sad looks on people's faces. And it actually took you, Jenna, um, a conversation we had now probably, gosh, over a year ago where we were having a moment, we were exploring some version of this conversation. And you actually called to mind a wondering of how that was for the words you used at that time was little Nicole. And I don't think until that point I really registered consciously how that was for me. Um, I was living how it was for me. And the way I was living it was I was constantly kind of shrinking down my accomplishments, constantly like not really showing people, not really feeling comfortable standing in my own power. So until you really kind of called that to mind for me, for which I'm really grateful, I wasn't fully aware of the incredible impact that that experience of seeing other people's jealousy or insecurity had on me. Last month in the circle, for instance, we talked about celebrating yourself. And I shared at length of how it is very difficult for me to celebrate myself. And I now understand part of that difficulty comes from that shrinking, that lessening, me not fully standing in my power. Each and every morning, I still future self journal. Um, those of you who follow along might have a copy of the, the template that I released. Those of you who don't, if you're interested, it's a journaling technique where we can work to create change each and every day. It's available on the website, theholisticpsychologist.com. I still use that technique. And every day I write in my journal how I am making a conscious intention throughout that day to stand in my power. Because for me, I, I don't yet know comfortably how to stand in my power because I've been so aware of how my power has made other people feel. I'm really glad that you brought that up because I didn't know you were going into that story. And that's exactly what came to mind as you were talking. And I remember it specifically around, uh, I think, puzzling. And I was watching or we were playing a game or puzzling. And I was sitting back kind of from like a, a teacher's eyes. So for those of you who don't know, I used to teach for the better part of a decade, preschoolers and kindergarten through third grade. And 
I really, I then observe my surroundings as we're all children. You know, if I see a group of people, I picture everyone as a child because I do think in so many ways that that really is the person we're interacting with. We're all just children in these grown up adult bodies still needing now to, to learn coping mechanisms, to learn ourselves for the very first time. And what I witnessed, what Nicole is sharing is, yeah, it's, you know, it was kind of intimidating. Like, okay, we've moved past, like, who's this person? I'm really jealous of her. Okay, well, it's just because we're aligned. Great. Poof, there's this merger. We have life business together. It's now years in. And Nicole's very competitive. She also excels a lot at everything she does. Now, I am someone who failed all through school, loved school, loved learning. I wouldn't say I loved school. I loved learning. My attention was so absorbed elsewhere with the trauma and chaos and everything that was going on at home that school was like a safe haven I went to for shelter essentially. But that was about it. I was autopiloted away. I was not present. So for someone now, you know, not feeling good enough, not feeling smart enough, walking around as little Jenna feeling that way. Now seeing Nicole, this person that I think is so above me, then realizing, okay, I'm actually aligned with this person. So now I'm here next to this person and they are good at everything they do. I can't even play like a game of Monopoly without getting my butt kicked or puzzling. Suddenly I've got, you know, five inches of a section done. I'm really proud of it. Nicole has an entire 2000 piece puzzle done. So in that moment, I started, I watched myself realize, okay, I want to quit because I'm not good at this. Like this isn't fun for me. And then I started to have a lot of compassion for little Nicole because I remembered having students that were mirrors of little Jenna and having students that were mirrors of little Nicole. And I remember witnessing how isolating it was at, at so many times for that student that was that little Nicole, for the one that was really quick, who was really smart in a way that worked really well for that application at hand, particularly at school, or was really did really well in games. Different things come naturally to different people. And my heart kind of sank in that moment, realizing how many times I've watched that kid in the class who is very present, very sweet, very kind, wants friends. And the defense of all of the other friends who aren't excelling at that exact thing the way that this person is or aren't super speed going through a 2000 piece puzzle is kind of to go into their own group and sort of, you know, isolate the other kid or not want to play with them, not want to interact with them because they themselves don't feel good around them. And why my heart sank in that moment is because I could understand from Nicole's perspective as little Nicole, just how lonely that might feel. So that example gives you a real life ability to explore what it could be like from different perspectives. Nicole historically is someone who probably has had people jealous of her. I mean, in this podcast, I'm talking about my initial jealousy of her. For me, I feel like I resonated so much with the jealousy of other people around me because I didn't excel at those things. I maybe excelled at gymnastics where I put all of my focus into, but aside from that, there wasn't any excelling. There was just me quite literally trying to survive. So it also opens up a whole arena for us to really have compassion for the fact that your partner is just the little version of themselves. Your boss, your coworker, your neighbor, the person at the checkout line, they are all just that person as a child. You're seeing that person's wounding and that person's insecurity. So if nothing else, jealousy too is a really great reframe for if, if you're feeling it, that person over there is also feeling it in a different way from a different vantage point. But that feeling of jealousy isn't isolated alone to you. Jealousy is really like any other emotion. We can use it as a marker, as a star point to become curious. If it's jealousy within ourselves, we can begin to explore what is it that we want? What is it that we need? What are we feeling insecure about? And then how can I begin to get there? If we're seeing or experiencing jealousy in someone else, right, we can extend compassion because likely there's aspects of our life that we're feeling jealousy around too, right? We can be compassionate. We don't have to take it personally. We can allow the person to have the experience that they're having, understanding that it is coming from a deeper place that's, that's theirs to understand and become curious about. We can step back out of ownership of that. We can understand that 
as we begin to live into our truth, there might be people that do feel insecure around it, that do feel jealous. Of course, understanding the impact that that has on us allows us to compassionately hold space for them and their journey and their process of becoming curious about what is going on on the deeper level for them. So all in all, jealousy is really something for us to have a lot of gratitude for. for It's the contrast of jealousy that gives us a very quick and very easy access point to explore our true selves deeper, to ask ourselves what it is that we want, who it is that we want to be around, what those type of people are are like, and then why, why do we want that? When we can identify those things through jealousy, through that contrast of jealousy, we then can take the actions to live a life that is actually in alignment with who we truly are and who it is that we want to become versus living a life surrounded by the experiences and people that were all choices made based on our past. Thank you all for joining us today for today's episode. As mentioned, this episode was curated from a direct message that we received on social media. And of course, always on social media, we are here and listening to your comments, your feedback, your direct messages, and really tailoring this conversation and each episode around what it is that you're dealing with and what it is that you want to hear covered and discussed. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to being with you again next week.